a lot went down tonight. I think I much more prefer tonight's episode than the premiere. Longer episode. There was there was a lot of ramifications of what happened last week, which I really enjoyed. But also, like, even though I'm a team black representative, I like how both sides, again, I'm team black, but I like how both sides right now, there's inner tor- turmoil between both groups. You know, Team Green has got a lot of stuff going on, a lot of you know, inner workings, people being fired on their days off, a lot of hypocrisy going on. But then Team Black, I mean, literally people just leaving without where where you headed, Damon. Where are you right now? We got the white worm in our camp now. So it's Team Black isn't isn't, you know, it's not hundred percent, but I, I think we're in a much better position than Team Green. In all honesty, I think Team Green is really Really in a bad spot. Um, and we'll get to that bad spot when we get to who's the new hand of the king and also the hand of the queen, if you know what I mean. A lot going on. A lot going on tonight. So let's let's get into it. We opened the episode with seeing, we talked about it, I think, briefly last week. The king, the kind of Joffrey type of amalgamations that I thought they were going with uh, Aegon, he's not Joffrey. He's, he's far from it. From what we gathered in tonight's episode, he actually cares. I mean, he showed it last week with the people of the town that we get to see not a repeat, rinse, recycle, repeat type of situation going on with uh, with Aegon being compared to Joffrey. Again, this episode really pulled the layers back for these characters and showing a little bit of the vulnerabilities for all the characters. As I kept talking about last week, that was so frustrating. I'm like, listen, we're at the you guys are at the brink of war. And there's no guards covering any of the doors, any of the, you know, royal family. Like, where are they? And I like how this episode kind of at least addressed, like, okay, the head of the king or the king's guard, you know, was gone and and all, you know, his second command was gone. So where was everyone? So I love that this episode at least least acknowledges that it was some screw ups. Aegon starting off yelling at his mom, yelling at Otto, I want vengeance, I want blood. I'm liking how this episode really puts an emphasis on the ramifications of when you lead with anger. You lead with hate, you you lead with revenge, that you open yourself up to shortcomings, right? I love how this show has really, really shown us that when these characters are leading with their emotions, they're leading with their anger, they're leading with revenge as their main priority, and that's the only thing that's on their mind, there are huge ramifications for that. So I, I really enjoy that. I really enjoyed how this episode put an emphasis on that, and we see that Throughout the episode, but more particularly throughout the first, you know, 10 minutes or so. One answer is they're, they're not aware of who is involved. Aegon pretty much knew who was involved. Aegon's like, nah, bro, it's it's my sister who did this. I can't stress enough how well written this episode was and how it put these characters in position. Again, when they don't, when they're, they're so hot-headed, these Targaryens, this goes for all Targaryens. Uh, even though, again, I got to make sure y'all know, Team Black. But this speaks for all Targaryens, man. Their downfall is their anger, man. They're, they got fire in their blood, man. That's, I guess, that's what happened when you're Targaryen. You lead with your heart, not with your head, in a lot of cases, and it unfortunately leads to devastation. I can't believe I'm going to say this. Otto Hightower was very logical in this episode. Otto Hightower was calling out Team Green. Going back to my point in the very beginning, he's telling them. Cool heads prevail. We need to calm down. We need to think with our brains, not with our emotions, and think about what we're actually implying that the queen had something to do, or you know, Renera had something to do with with the killing of um, you know the king's son. So there, there again, he he was very, very calm, cool, collective. This episode, Allison had the nerve. Let me tell you something. Allison had the nerve to tell her daughter, who just lost her son. And Allison, Allison obviously lost her grandson. Hey, honey, um, what you saw last night, um, you want to talk about? <laughs> what, Allison? That's the first thing that's one that's on your mind right now, Elena. Who, by the way, I think has spoken the most in this, or at least not even spoken, but had like the most to do in any episode of the show so far. I've given her more to do than saying things under her breath that have a lot of importance um but shout out to helena in this episode man she i love she's like mom i don't i don't got time for your bs right now um i like that but i think that that will come back i think that this conversation will come back into question sooner rather than later because that is especially now that person who's the head of the king is sleeping with the queen and there has to be some type of conflict of interest right so 
we'll get to that. But a scene that was very interesting to me, and I wonder if it's going to have any foreshadowing. And Allison and Helena are going through the streets mourning their their son. There was a moment when Helena's looking up in the sky, and I think they're like rice or flowers, but it was like these little, it, it almost looked like it was ash in the sky. I don't know if that's a, a future foreshadow, just what's to come for both sides, team green and black of like that meaning something later. Now, Helena didn't like mumble anything, at least that I didn't see it in her breath, like her saying ash or something, but I think that that implies something. Um, I could be wrong, but I thought that they put an emphasis on that as a, if it though that was like she was having like a, like Vixie, yeah, like almost like she was having a vision, ashes in the sky being like an after effect of Team Green and Team Black coming to you know head and um, lasting standing is just smoke and ashes. So I love that the show didn't keep us on the edge of our toe, you know, keep us waiting and waiting for this conversation between Renera and Damon, but she's talking to her people and they're like, um, this is what happened and you're the blame. She's like, I. <laughs> I literally just lost my son. Why would I even think about killing? A I mean, she was thinking about killing a son. You know, Eamon is a son. She obviously didn't mean for for what to happen to, to happen. I love Rainice when she looked at Damon. It was like she knew. She read through the BS because he's just sitting there kind of smirking and smiling. But this is what I loved about it. They have that conversation that's being had that we're about to talk about now. So Damon is obviously playing dumb. But I love how Renera called him out for his BS that like, Regardless, if you didn't mean for what happened to happen, you still made the call without clarification. She's like, listen, I can't trust you. My dad didn't trust you. And obviously, Damon got upset about that. She's telling him the truth. He knows she's telling him the truth. He doesn't want to hear it because he's Damon. He doesn't, you know, take orders from anyone. You know, she calls him out and says, do you even want me to be your queen? She's like, who was the one? I Let me tell y'all something, man. The way that this show puts its actors in positions to shine with great dialogue, but it's, you know, to, to, to propel the scene is you have to have great actors in these scenes. And the the back and forth of an argument between Damon and Renera almost feels as eventful, as thrilling, as tension felt as a as a scene that we see later in this in the show with two those, you know, with swords, with weaponry, with actual um hand-to-hand -hand combat. The verbal fight between those two um is just as thrilling as an action scene because the words are the are the weapons you know and it's just a, it's the back and forth ah oh. and by the way she was right you know I, I am a queen renera fan all day but she was speaking the truth he's a liar he can't be trusted she tells him there's this darkness in you that you don't like to show but i see you and i just love that renera is so honest with him i love that she's not a, a, a character that has that restraint um that has that fearfulness of damon she don't care love that about renera and i love that damon knows that about renera um that scene to me is just a, a highlight for me for sure but as we kind of maneuver through the rest of the episode correct me if i'm wrong if, if you guys feel the same way renera sends bela king's landing to do surveillance on what the enemy's doing next and she tells her to be discreet about it. First off, how can anyone be discreet with a dragon? Right? They, they don't have cloaks. They don't have a button you can push to make them go invisible. Um, so discreet dragon doesn't even coexist to me. That sounds like an oxymoron. But putting that aside, didn't you just lose a son that was flying his dragon? Under your orders? Huh. And then to go by herself? Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I don't know, Renera. Again, y'all know I'm a, I'm a big fan of hers. But she's in enemy territory. I hope that decision doesn't bite her an ass. This is step one of just many decisions from Krusty Cole, as y'all call him in the comments. Shout out to the actor, because he's doing a phenomenal job. He goes to the to one of the twins, looks at his cloak and says, what is this? What, what are you doing, man? Go wash yourself up. Go change. You're a disgrace to the King's Guard. Matter of fact, where were you? Well, what happened happened. And he's like, I was doing, I was here. To, uh, the question is, um, head of the Knights King, where were you? 
right? And he gets all upset, I, I yell at him, telling the, the twin to do the mission that we'll talk about later. And he 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 had the nerve to tell that man, and then to honestly, he he knew it was a suicide mission, right? I think he there was two things that that Krusty Cole was doing in that scene. He was covering his own ass because someone was holding him responsible, holding him accountable, and he didn't like that. So it says, you know what? If he continues to, you know, spew this 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 truth of where was I, and more people start to realize that, and more people start to talk, he gets to the king, and the king starts answering questions, you know, so on and so forth. Like, let me put this one person that's questioning my authority and questioning my whereabouts in this position to die, but then. On a whim that he actually gets the job done, I'm the one that gave him the order. So it kind of looks good on my end. Boy, I hate Cole. <laughs> I hate that MF so bad. But anyway, I mean, the twin can't say no. Later in the episode, Eamon, very vulnerable. I mean, so much so the man is butt ass naked. Again, it's almost like he was, she was holding him like a baby. I feel bad for what I did to my cousin. You know, I, I didn't mean to do that. He also tells her that he kind of feels a little, um, I don't want to say happy, but he feels a little, but he's feeling himself because his dad, or dad, it, it might as well be his dad because they act very similar, but his um, uncle, Damon, wanted him to die. And he kind of got like happy because of that. He's like, man, my uncle was willing to 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 have an assassination done on me in my, in my bed. I'm moving on up in this world, man. It's a messed up way to think of it but that's the way he kind of looked at it this was a scene that i was itching for i think i talked about last week i would love to see renera and the, and the white worm have a conversation and by goodness the the, they, the showrunners answered my prayers and gave us a scene and it was uh, another electric scene she calls her in the room she looks her up or down look through her soul man i mean the way that renera was looking through her and just seeing if she could detect lies seeing if she could be trusted she remembers her you know from when she was a little girl she saw her on the bridge when damon was claiming this is my wife this is my wife um you know she's having my child or whatnot and renera remembered that and i think in her mind she's like man that was it was like 10 15 years ago and you still alive and you made your way through the thick and thin she talks about how she you know went from the streets uh, to, to run her own business, to being having her business taken away, for having her life almost taken away, from going toe to toe with the high towers. Even though she messed around with Damon, this is what I like about Renera. She can she can see the potential in people, even if they've done bad things. I like that she saw the value in her, and I think this is a duo that I anticipate to be very lethal. Aegon makes a decision to kill all of the rat catchers, hangs them all up in the street. Otto, who I said earlier, makes the right call, makes a logical call, and calls out his grandson. He tells him that was a dumb decision. You're losing the faith of the people. They, they're going to question who you are as a person. Are you going to lead with, with nobility and, and, and rational decisions, or are you going to lead with fear, right? He, he brings up his dad, how his dad had decency, and that pissed off young Aegon. He tells his grandfather, you know what? Enough of this. Take off the hand. You weren't, you're not my hand, the king. You were my dad's hand, the king. So you just kind of were grandfathered in. He tells him to give the position, the title of hand of the king to the man that has his hand on his, you know, I won't go there. But yeah, he gives the hand of the king to Sir Kristen Cole. Even Kristen Cole, the idiot himself, is like, me? You talking to me? You want you want me to be the Anna King? So there's two things that's going through my mind when that scene happens. Number one, I'm like, that is the dumbest decision that anyone has ever made in the in the history of Game of Thrones and, and, and in Westeros and in, in, in the kings of all kings that sit on the throne. It might be a little bit of hyperbole, but you know, very dumb decision. I'm like, that's that's one. But then number two, the the team black in me was like, that might have been the smartest decision because that's just going to break them down from the inside out. Can you imagine the advice that Cole will be giving the king moving forward? I think this will be the thing that's just going to 
take him out. So again, it's a dumb decision, but it's also the smartest decision as a team black representative that could have been made. So anyway, let me know what y'all think about it. As we wrap up the episode, big moments here. Again, the alliance, I think it's coming. Renera releases the white worm. The white worm sees the twin brother making his way to the queen. Now, we don't see her warning Renera, but it's assume that she did go back and I can see her like coming into the room like oh and like warning her and she takes it as like a sign like, oh I thought you were gone and you stayed the suspense in this scene is fantastic again this is just this might be a me thing but it's just I, I just wish when characters die I wish there was there was there was more uh time spent with characters before they meet their demise we haven't spent that much time with the twins um we could probably count the times in our hand they've been in scenes but they haven't been impactful in scenes I, I i do wish that there was maybe a little bit more moments with them to have this ultimate result be a little bit more impactful at least for me i'll just speak for myself silly as it is like oh there's a twin and i don't know who it, like it, it it sounds silly but the execution was really well done he makes his way to renera and as you're watching you're like because the way that the, the show positions them you don't know who's who like one character's going this way and then especially when it's when the one brother took off took off his helmet you know who was who one of them the bad twin makes his way into her quarters they're fighting uh and the only way i was able to kind of track who was winning and was losing because we saw the run brother he got cut in the leg and which was like okay i can follow the leg the leg was the leg but then the show got you know like it was like ah well we're gonna throw you off a little bit more we're gonna show you scenes from the neck from the like the waist up so you couldn't tell who was winning who was losing because they're obviously twins i'm gonna have to rewatch the episode i think the good brother was the one that killed the bad brother first stick with me the one that injured the leg that was team black ultimately stabbed his brother and killed him he's told his brother before he died you know i love you before he had you know the brother got the upper hand and winning but then i think again team black's twin stabbed his brother but then he loved his brother he can't imagine living with him the idea that he had to kill his own brother so then he took his own life am i right uh it's a great scene and what makes it even uh which would have just elevated it just a little bit more as if we would have had spent more time with the brothers it, it doesn't fall short of what i think these brothers still represented in the show when family comes to take each other's life that no one ultimately wins both of those brothers end up dying it's not going to be a winner there's there's just a loser in the situation last scene of our episode is otto talking to his daughter and being like you know i'm gonna go back home which, by the way, they, they mentioned, I know, it's, uh, again, not being a book reader, but I know that there is another brother, another son that Allison has that hasn't been in the show. And she references that brother in this episode. So I wonder if we're going to see him eventually. But Otto says, you know, I'm going back home, wipe my wounds off. And um, she tells him, let time go by. I'll talk to my son, a.k.a. the king, and, you know, that let things cool down and, you know. Hopefully get you, get you your job back, Dad. Allison going into her son just kind of get that that conversation going. She goes in his room. He's crying. Obviously lost his son. Obviously just fired his grandfather. Obviously, you know, King is being up to question. But then, why do they have to end like this? <laughs> Allison goes into the room. Who's there? The newly appointed hand of the king. Really using that hand uh, in this scene. Uh, pun intended. He they go in a room. And they get it on. They get it on, y'all. The new hand of the king is smashing the queen. Time to give our, whether you use letters or numbers, would you guys rate tonight's episode? I think for me, uh, I mentioned it earlier up top, I did not, not like episode one, but it was just not as great as I think a premiere of such a uh, prestigious show of the caliber of, of House of Dragon could have been. Um, I think I gave last week like a, a seven or seven and a half out of ten tonight a nine a nine out of ten doesn't get that a plus it doesn't get that 10 out of 10 for me is because again those brothers i wish we would have had a little bit more time to spend with them to have that moment hit emotionally again the decision for renera to send bela to um king's landing discreetly with a dragon seems to be they thought it was a good idea to send her by herself so we'll see what comes of that but uh, not overall fantastic fantastic episode it had a lot of incredible acting phenomenal score which it always has a great score but a really great score great cinematography great writing and just phenomenal performances again i think my mvp i'm gonna give two mvps tonight i can't believe that the second one i'm giving i can't believe i'm saying this but you know i'll call it how i see it uh renera 
number one, phenomenal. The scene with her and Damon, incredible. Uh, the scene with her, White Worm, phenomenal. Um, just, just great all around the board. Um, even with her bad decision <clears throat> to send a young, young girl to potentially her death, we'll see. But Renera gets get his MVP. I can't look at the camera when I say this, but the other MVP goes to Otto. I think Otto Hightower had uh, some phenomenal moments, great logical moments, calling his side out for the dumb, idiotic decisions from Aegon, um, Cole, telling him, shut up, dude. This is my grandson. Why are you? Shut up. Um, but yeah, Renera and Otto. And we'll do that moving forward. We'll we'll try to find awards for Team Green moving forward because there's always going to be Team Black awards. But Renera and Otto, for sure, are my MVPs for Team Green and Team Black. Listen, y'all, you guys are awesome. You guys are great. I appreciate y'all. Hope y'all have a great rest of your Sunday. If it's the next day where you're at, hope you have a great Monday, and I hope you have a great week. And uh, stay safe. See you all soon, very soon, on all the things we'll be covering this week. But anyway, catch y'all next time. Peace. Thank you.